Today on Christ the Healer. Says, Man, I don't, I don't deserve this goodness from God. You're right. You don't. But you don't get what you deserve. Jesus took all that he didn't deserve to make sure that you got everything you don't deserve. We have a loving father that says this, I'm greater than what happened to you yesterday. I'm greater than what happened to you today. And I'm greater than anything that can happen to you tomorrow. You ain't seen the best physician until you see the great physician. His grace is sufficient enough to give you the power to do it. Stop telling me all the reasons why you can't and give me the one reason why you can. It's because you're in Christ and Christ can. Welcome to Christ the Healer with Don Allen. Thanks for joining us today. We know this to be true. Millions of Christians, now I'm not talking about folks that don't go to church, uh, people that don't walk into, uh, you know, step foot in a church or meetings like this, not, 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 you know, people out in the world. I'm talking about Christians, uh, people that love the Lord, that maybe they come to meetings like this. Uh, they love Jesus, they've maybe worked in a ministry before or, you know, have something to do with the church. I'm talking about those kind of folks, Christians, that do not know that it is God's will for them to be healed. They have no idea. And so here's the thing. If they don't know, then the world's not going to ever know. If the Christians can't get it figured out, these guys out here aren't ever going to know that God wants them healed either, right? But as uh, the church as a whole, they really don't agree on this subject at all, that it's the will of God to heal. Uh, most churches are really divided on that. They don't, they don't believe that way. And, you know, we know that that's been proven here just in our little town with all the churches that uh, have come against us because we say God does heal. And we know that a lot of them don't like that. You know, they argue and they fuss and, and they want to debate it. And at the end of the day, all it does is it brings division to the body of Christ. And the world doesn't want anything to do with it. And I don't blame them. They, they can fight about other things somewhere else. They don't want to come in here. But I'm standing here today to tell you that it is the will of God to heal you. Everyone, all the time, of everything, anytime, every time, anywhere. Amen. That's what I'm saying in here today. Amen. How do I know? Well, because I see two small words in this book. It's just two words, but it's enough because it's in the book. Amen. Here in Luke 5, verses 12 and 13, we know this. There was a leper that approached Jesus, right? You remember the story? He approaches Jesus and, and he said, I know you can heal me if it was your will to do so, if it be thy will. And what did Jesus say to him? What did Jesus say to this guy? He said, I will. Amen. That's what he said. Those are two words that rise above all theory and all doctrines and, and theologies and debates. I mean, how can you debate such a thing? How can you debate that he said that right there? Here's the thing. If we were standing there on that day and, and this leper approached and we were standing there with Jesus and some other people. And if this if we were standing there and this leper came up to Jesus and he said, Lord, I know you can if you will. And then the discussion started and somebody said, well, sir, excuse me. Now, wait a minute. Now, now we don't know that Jesus really wants you to be healed. I mean, you're right in saying that he can do it, but you know, we don't know if Jesus wants to heal you, and honestly, we don't know if Jesus really is doing that anymore, and we're standing there, and Jesus interrupts the guy, and he says, no, 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 I will, I will, I'll heal you, I will, and then all of a sudden, we're standing there, and Jesus reaches out, and he touches the man, and the leprosy disappears right before our eyes, how do you argue that? Because I was there, right here in the book, it says so. I believe it. This is it's not a fairy tale. That really happened to somebody. Amen. How can you argue such a thing? Would you walk away from that encounter questioning if it was God's will to heal people at that moment if you were there? No, I don't think the leper had uh, any doubt about it after that, right? Praise God. Well, we saw it. I will. And the real issue is never on the Jesus side of healing. It's on our side. We're going to have to take some responsibility. You know, I hear this all the time. Why is God not healing me? Why did God not heal them? I just had somebody send me a mess. Why is God not healing me? I hear this all the time. Well, excuse me. I'm sorry. Are you going to tell me? Because, you know, they're blaming God. So you're going to tell me that you have this book all figured out. You've read this book and you're doing this book and you, you understand this book front to back and you're obeying it totally. So it couldn't be your fault. It's got to be him because I know everything about the book and it's just got to be God. Give me a break. Come on. It's just got to be him. Listen, you better wake up because here's the thing. It never was and it never will be his fault why you're not getting healed. Yeah, I'm talking biblically now. Where's the scripture showing us that it was God's fault that somebody didn't get healed? Where's it at in the book? I know what people are saying, but where's it at in the book where it was God's fault? And he said, uh, no, uh, nope, not you. It's not in there. It's not in there at all. So if you are questioning God's willingness I mean, even just that statement, why isn't God healing me, tells me you don't have faith for it. 
If you're blaming him and questioning him, that means you're not in faith for it, and you can't receive it. You won't be able to receive it. You have to be established to what it is that the Word of God says. That's the only way that you can know what his will is. Well, we don't know what the will is. You know, Pastor said this, and, and you know, uh, Oprah said that, and, and uh, you know, I got Dr. Phil over here, and I got Grandma saying this, and I know what everybody else is saying. I want to find out what he is saying. Yeah. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing. Yeah, I hear what everybody else is saying, but your hearing has to come by the Word of God. That's what it says. I want to know what he is saying, amen? I want to find out what it is. I mean, isn't that what you would want? If people were going around town, like this little town, and saying, well, you know, uh, Pastor Nick here, he said this, and, and, you know, he said that, and I think Pastor Nick means this, and I think he means that, wouldn't you want them to just come to the source and find out? Just come and ask me, and I'll tell you. That's what going to the Word of God is. It's just going to the source. What did God say? I don't care what you say about it. What did he say? Open up the book and find out. It's just that simple, amen? And so for us to be standing there and, and, and to say anything else other than I will is unscriptural because that's what Jesus said. You'd be twisting it and making it into something else because he said I will. That's exactly what he said. He said what he meant and he meant what he said. I don't think Jesus uh, messed up on that one, amen? I think he said it and he meant it. So even after the leper was healed and we're standing there looking at Jesus, what, are you going to look him in the eye and argue with him about it after you just saw the leper be healed? Because I just saw the leper be healed right here in the book. Now you're going to stand there and argue with him and say, I, but you didn't really, I mean, he's healed. The man was healed. Jesus hasn't changed. He's not going to change. He doesn't like me more than you and you more than them. He's no respecter of persons. And if he said, I will, on that day to that guy, then he's still going to say, I will, to you and you and you and them and me today. He's not changed. He's the same always. So in my mind and in my heart, it's settled. How about you? It doesn't matter if it's settled in me. How about you? Amen? Now, we're not just going to stand up here on this program and say it's that way because, well, that's just the way that Grandma raised me and that's how it's supposed to be. And No, the Bible tells us this, that we have to... Uh, establish every word with two or three scriptures, right? I mean, two or three witnesses, it said. Well, we're in the middle of giving you 30. 30 of them. I think that would be enough. Any of you ever tell your kids, well, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you should clean your room? No, you tell them one, and that should be enough, amen? Well, I'm going to give you 30 reasons. That's what we're in the middle of doing right here. 30 reasons why we believe it is the will of God to heal, and we're going to review these real quick. Here's the thing. If you've missed them, then go to the website, Two Guys in the Bible, CDs and DVDs are available there. If you're too cheap to buy our cheap little CDs and DVDs, then you can go to uh, the Two Guys in the Bible YouTube channel and you can see them all for free on there. So praise God, go do that. Reason number one, why we believe it is God's will to heal. We'll just review here. God's word is medicine. You remember that one? That was a long time ago. Number two, God's word will sustain you through sickness and disease. Number three, the original creation. Number four, God's will in heaven. Number five, the origin of sickness. Where did it come from? Number six, sickness is of the devil. We saw scripture after scripture after scripture that said it was of the devil, it's evil, it was from Satan. We didn't find one single scripture that said it was from God. Right. So quit blaming him for it. Number seven, the covenant of healing. Number eight, sickness is a curse, and we have been redeemed from the curse. Amen. Amen. Number nine, types of redemption, uh, revealing that healing was in those types, you remember. Uh, then the next one was uh, healing is in the actual plan of redemption itself. By his stripes you are healed. Number 11, the resurrection of Jesus. The same spirit that rose Jesus, he didn't just raise in spirit, the same spirit that rose that beaten and dead, abused body, it says, dwells in your mortal flesh. In your flesh, not just your spirit, man. Number 12, the fatherhood of God. Good gifts come from the Father. What did it say? If you ask your father for a fish, is he going to give you a snake? No. If you ask him for bread, is he going to give you a rock? No. And if you ask him for a healing, is he going to give you cancer? No, that's not a good father. Number 13, healing is the children's bread. Are you a child of God? Amen. Are you a child of God? We need an altar call right now. Are you a child of God? Amen. Well, then healing belongs to you. It didn't say healing was the children's dessert because that would just be something special once in a while maybe. It said children's bread. It's a staple product, the children's bread. And here we had a Syrophoenician woman coming, her daughter sick and dying, and she came to Jesus and he said, well, that's the children's bread. And she said, true, but just the crumbs, just the crumbs would heal my daughter. And these crumbs from the master's table had enough power. She's not born again. 
She's not a follower of Jesus Christ like you and I. And the crumbs healed her daughter of a deadly disease. Don't you think the whole loaf of bread that belongs to the children could heal you? Well, absolutely it can. Tonight, reason number 14, why we are sure that it is the will of God to heal everybody today is because the mercy of God. Amen. The mercy of God. Turn to Mark 1. Here's Mark's account of this leper story that we saw in Luke. You know, Luke's account. Here's Mark's account. In Mark 1, verse 40, it says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If you will, you can make me clean. Again, this is Mark's account of the same thing that Luke saw. Verse 41, And Jesus moved with compassion. This is what I want you to see tonight. Jesus moved with compassion. Luke didn't say that. Why? Well, because Luke's a doctor. You remember? Dr. Luke. He's going to tell you which ear got cut off on Malchus. He, he said, when he was looking at that story of the leper, what did he say? Well, the, the leper was covered with leprosy. As a doctor, he's looking at the leper. Here's Mark standing there watching Jesus in the story now. He's looking at him. And so this is what he noticed. He said, wait a minute. Jesus didn't just do this. Jesus was moved with compassion when he was doing this. And he reached out his hand and he touched him. And he said, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed and he was cleansed. Mark said, moved with compassion. Do you suppose Jesus is still compassionate? Yeah. You think he's still moved with compassion today? Yeah. Well, of course he is. But I want you to see as we go on here, person after person in the Bible who needed set free from whatever was tormenting them, they came and they would yell things like this. Son of David or Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Blind people, deaf people, lame people. I mean, the list goes on and on. But they would say, have mercy for me. And every person that came and asked for mercy left with a healing. I think that's very interesting. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy. It's not what it says. Mercies. Mercies. It's plural. Does God have mercy in more than one area? Well, he does. Thank God that he does. Now, usually when we talk about mercy, what do we think about right away? Sin. Sin. We think about sin. We sinned and God has mercy on us and he forgave us of our sin. Well, that's true. He has mercy in that area as well. But he also has mercy for other things too. Uh, you got to know this. He has mercy for when we're dumb. There's mercy for dumbness. <laughs> Amen. There is. He has financial mercy. Anybody had to ask for some help there? Uh, financial mercy? Yeah. I've had to get on my face and ask for forgiveness at times and ask for some help there. Lord, uh, you know, you warned me not to do it, and I just had to have it, and I bought it anyway, and now I'm in trouble. Mercy, please. <laughs> mercy, amen. I just had to do it. I'm asking for mercy. If I had listened to him, I would have never had gotten into any trouble. You understand that? No one's ever gotten into a financial mess doing what it is that Jesus told them to do. No church or, or organization has ever gotten a mess by doing what it is that God tells them to do. Not at all. You've got to listen to him. Now, Christians believe all kinds of junk in this area, and I'm, I may step on some of you tonight because I've heard this before, and I'm talking about faith people now. I'm talking about the charismatics, you know, not just denominational folk. I'm talking about all of us. Uh, and we've heard stuff like this. If you really ever set out to fully believe God, then watch out. All hell's going to break loose. You better watch out, right? I mean, what's that based on? We hear this all the time. All kinds of people believe this. Look out. I mean, your finances are going to get attacked. Your marriage is going to get attacked. Your children are going to get attacked. So what I'm hearing is this. Then the more that I obey God, right? This is, this is what I'm hearing. The more that I obey God, then the more cursed I'm going to be. Is that right? Where's that scripture? But that's the kind of garbage that we say all the time. Friends, financial problems are a curse. Health problems are a curse. Marriage trouble is a curse. And what you're saying is, the more I fully follow God, then the more cursed I become. And people believe this, and then with their mouth, they make it happen. They open up the door for it to happen, right? Some folks won't fully obey God because they don't want this to happen to them. I don't want to be a target. I don't want to be standing out there and, and the devil find me. Friends, let me tell you something. I can absolutely guarantee you this. If you don't follow God's plan, you will be in trouble. I promise you that. I can promise you that. The more you obey God, the more you get the needs met. The more you obey God, you're blessed and kept. And the devil, he's not all that he cracks himself up to be, friends. I want you to understand that. He can't do anything that you don't give him permission to do. Oh, he'll try. He'll try. Mercy. He's the father of mercies, plural. He has mercy for your finances. He has mercy for your peace. He has mercy for your children, amen. Mercy for your bodies and all these other situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in. Mercies, mercies. And if you're willing and obedient, then all hell is going to break loose. That's not what it says. 
If you're willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. I don't know about you, but I think healing's pretty good. Amen? I think it's pretty good. And God's going to protect you and keep you. The more you obey, the more he's going to be able to do it for you. Now, even if you messed up, here's, here's the cool thing. Even if you messed up and God told you to do one thing and you went and did another, it's not the end. It's not the end for you. Well, you made your bed, you got to lie in it. That's what the world says. That's not God. Don't forget mercy. There's mercy. Mercy means you don't get the punishment, the, the punishment and the judgment that you should have got. And it means you get the good stuff that you shouldn't have got. Does that make sense? That's what mercy is. So maybe you're one that has a physical situation in your life, and maybe it was self-induced. And you know what I mean. Maybe you smoked. Maybe you took drugs. Maybe you drank and you did all those things that maybe you weren't supposed to do, and you've abused your body, and, and it's been hurt, and you didn't eat right, or whatever the thing is. Mercy. You have, to, you have to rely on mercy in those times. You have to. God has mercies for that. And there's, there's nothing too far gone that God can't fix, Lazarus. Right? right? I mean, come on, we're still breathing. Amen? So we're, we're good. But God can fix it because it's not because you've done everything right. It's because Jesus did everything right. Amen? Amen? And that's why we get mercy. Matthew 9, 27. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him. Notice what they said. Two blind men followed him saying what? Crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy. Now, what did they want? Well, they wanted their eyes healed. Maybe they needed a creative miracle. Maybe they were born that way. But they're blind, and they wanted to be healed. But why didn't they just say that? Hey, son of David, heal us. And why didn't Jesus correct them and say, well, what did you want? You really wanted healed. Why are you saying mercy? Jesus didn't correct them. What does that prove? It proves this. Healing is a mercy. And I don't think you understand, friends, how important it is to know this. Because this means that uh, uh, you understand mercy is unmerited. It's undeserved. It's not something that you earn. Mercy's not for when you've done it right. Mercy's for when you've done it wrong. That's what mercy is all about, which means you don't earn it or deserve it. It's a mercy. It's, it's by faith through grace, just like forgiveness of sins. You don't deserve that, but he forgives you anyway. You don't deserve to get to go to heaven the way that we act sometimes, but mercy. He has mercy for that. It's got nothing to do with how good you've been, how bad you've been. It's not based on that. I've, I've heard this a hundred times. So-and-so was the best Christian that I ever knew. What does that matter? That's all works-based. If it was based on you being good or bad, we don't have a chance. Because you're never, you can be good as good can be, and you can always be a little better. Isn't that right? It's not based on that. It's based on him being good. Amen? It's all about him. It never was about us being good. Listen, if, if it was just about being good, then we don't need to be saved. We could just be good enough and get to heaven. But it's not like that. It's not, let's, let's, let's make a deal. you got nothing to offer, you understand. You can't operate on your righteousness. It's his righteousness. Your righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. So we had to have Jesus' righteousness because it was already approved in heaven. And we get to wear it. And when they look at us, they say, good, 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 good. You're good. You're good because they see his righteousness on us. Amen. But you got to be careful now. I've had people come and I've had people come and offer me a lot of money to be healed. Can't do that. Can't do that. You can't buy it, friends. You can't buy it. You can't buy the things that have already been bought and paid for. Amen. You can't afford a miracle. You know what I mean? Look at the price that was paid for us to have it. Amen. You can't afford a miracle. Amen. It's not about dollars. It's not about what you can do. I remember there was a gentleman early on in our ministry. He had called and his son was in a very life-threatening situation. And then the father was very desperate. And he had called, and this is when we were on another, another station back then. And he had called, and he, uh, you know, he wanted prayer for his son, and we prayed, and then he asked for a prayer cloth. If I, you know, according to Acts 19, 11, and 12, would you send a prayer cloth? Yeah, we'll do it. And got his address, and when I got done, he said, well, how much? I said, how much for what? How much for that prayer cloth? I said, sir, you can't buy something that's already been bought and paid for. Jesus paid the price. You can't buy that. I said, you can't afford a miracle for your son. And he's like, What? I don't have to send any money. No, you can't buy a miracle. I don't care what they say. You can't buy one on this program. You can't do it. You can't send enough money for it because money's not the issue here. Amen? And you know what? That boy was healed a week later and out of the hospital. Glory to God. Amen? Jesus bought and paid for it so that you wouldn't have to. That boy was healed. Amen? Nothing holds enough value except the blood of the lamb. And Jesus paid for it and he bought it. He bought it. It says to, you're, you, you've been bought with a price. You're not even your own. Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. You don't even belong to yourself. So you certainly don't belong to some sickness and disease. Amen? Amen. 
But we don't have to do anything to earn a healing. It's a mercy. If it was based off of being good enough, you don't have a chance. Not a chance. So if you're one of those out there that says, man, I don't, I don't deserve this goodness from God. You're right. You don't. But you don't get what you deserve. Jesus took all that he didn't deserve to make sure that you got everything you don't deserve. Well, I've made too many mistakes. I know. That's what mercy is all about. Amen. You don't get the judgment. You don't get the punishment that you should have. Matthew 9, 27. They said, have mercy on us. And what they get? They got their eyes opened. They got healed. Amen. Is God still merciful? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Psalm 86, 15. But thou, O Lord, art God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and in truth. He has plenty of mercy. Plenty of it for you. Folks don't realize that this is the thing. When, when somebody says, hey, it's probably not God's will to heal. Well, then what you're saying is it's not God's will to have mercy on somebody. Oh, God doesn't want to heal me. Well, then God doesn't want to have mercy on you. God's not a merciful God because that's what healing's all about. Mercy. Mercy, it can't be true because it said he's rich in mercy, amen? I mean, don't you think that, and now on the flip side, not receiving healing, but how about ministering to some others? How about being a minister and going and ministering to somebody? How about old Peter here? The denier of Christ denies him three times. He's the biggest mouth around saying, I'll never do that, Lord. I'm with you. I am with you to the end. And cock a doodle doo denies him three times. How do you think he felt when he heard that last, that last sound? I mean, how, I bet he probably said, you know what? I am going to burn in hell right now. I'm sure he felt that way. I'm going to burn in hell. I don't have a chance. I'm done. And I mean, even when Jesus rose from the dead, do you see what he said? He said, go tell my disciples and Peter. <laughs> Peter was outside the circle. But I love that Jesus brought him back in. And, and where do we see old Pete? In the upper room with everybody else. And he's the guy, the denier of Christ. I'm talking about mercy now. He's the guy that steps up and introduces the world to the Holy Ghost and leads 3,000 men to Christ. He's the guy whose shadow healed people. Nobody else's shadow did that. His. The denier of Christ. Well, you're just so bad. Friends, I was preaching down in Tampa. And I was down there, and we were holding a revival down there, and I loved it because there was, there was this, uh, I remember sitting right over here. I mean, it's just straight out of Miami Vice, if you've ever seen, you know, I'm showing my age. Here was a guy with his chains. He was a drug dealer, and he's got his girl with him there. Drug dealers came to, came to our revival because he was dying from sharing needles, and she had hep C. And so they come up, and God touches them and heals them, and they get born again, and they go out and start getting some of their clients that they were selling drugs to and bring them in, and they got healed. Then they go get the, the prostitute off of the corner, bring her in the next night. She comes up. She gets born again. And then 15 minutes later, the Lord is having me tell her to come up. And she lays hands on three people, healed, healed, healed. Why? Mercy. Mercy. It's the mercy. It's the mercy. Amen. So you think you're so bad that God can't use you. You think you've blown it and, and you haven't done it right. Well, you're right. But mercy. Mercy. It's all about mercy, amen? It's all about mercy. I mean, you think about the people that Jesus ministered to, right? There's times that it said uh, multitudes, multitudes. Now, in the Bible, when it says multitudes, we know that's thousands of people, thousands of people. Don't you suppose in those thousands of people, there was at least one bad guy? Because doesn't it say when he, when he ministered to those thousands, they were all healed? Don't you think there was a guy in there that was a jerk that got healed? Uh, maybe a, a guy or a gal that hadn't done it all right, and yet it said they were all healed. I mean, we see times where they were demon-possessed. Now, you know they're not doing it right. They're not even serving the Lord. They're serving Satan. And it says that they cast out the devils and they got healed too. Friends, you're not so far gone that you can't be healed because it's a mercy. It's a mercy from your loving Father God. It was all about love. And he loves you. He loves you too much to leave you that way. It goes back to our other reason. A good father... Boy, when one of their children get hurt, out of love, not duty. He, 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 made, he made a point to tell you he was moved with compassion on them. When one of my children get hurt, it's not time to clock in his dad again. What'd you do this time? I don't have time for this. Now you're moved with compassion. It doesn't matter if you got time or not. You're moved with compassion. And you're going to sweep that child and do everything you can for that. Even if I remember when Michael... I'm going to ride my bike down that hill. Son, don't do it. You're going to crash. I've got to. Okay? And I told Amy, get in the van. We've got to follow him. He's going to wreck. And I mean, it was the worst and most amazing bike wreck I've ever seen. <laughs> Gravel and spit and tires flying everywhere. And he just tumbled. And he's bleeding all over. And I jumped out. And I was like, that is awesome. 
that was the best bike rack I've ever seen. But I picked him up and helped him even after I told him, son, it's not going to work. Mercy. Let's clean him up. Let's get a new bike because it was ruined. Mercy. Mercy. Do you think he ever did it again? No, he did not. <laughs> Once was enough. Amen. But mercy. Amen. He's got mercy. And so I want you to understand God has mercy, right? What, what, do, we, what do we hear the Bible say? His mercies are new. Now, you remember in our last reason, it's, they're, they're new every single morning. You remember in our last reason when we talked about the children's bread and how Jesus said this, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, our daily healing provision, it could be. And now here we are. His mercies are new every single morning. Why? Because he knew you were going to have an opportunity to blow it every single morning. And that's just how it was. He knew that. And so he, we've got mercies for every single day. Now, when you've blown it, what do you do? Because it's not an excuse to blow it. You hit the carpet. You repent. You ask for forgiveness. And then you cry out to that mercy. You cry out to that mercy. And just like all these in the Bible, he is a merciful God. Even when you've blown it and you've done it all wrong, Jesus paid the price so that you wouldn't have to. You can't do it. It's his mercy. And all you got to do is believe it tonight, right here. Is he still as merciful as he was uh, 2,000 years ago? Yeah. yeah, the Bible says he doesn't change. And so all you got to do tonight is just believe that and receive it. And you call out on that God that is a God of mercy, and you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching today. I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about the mercy of God healing mercies. I know usually when we think of mercy, like I mentioned in the, in the message there, we're thinking of forgiveness of sins and how he needs to have mercy on us for that. Well, he does and, and he will, but I want you to begin to see the mercies for healing. He's got healing mercies for you. All these in the Bible, every time that they cried out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He never turned his back on him. The good, the bad, the ugly, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if they did it, didn't do it. It didn't matter. He came in and they got exactly what they were looking for and they got healed. So don't forget that you can cry out. There's those times you're going to blow it. I guarantee you, you're going to blow it. You're going to mess it up. You're not going to do it right. But he's got new mercy for you every single morning. He's rich in mercy, never going to run out. Doesn't give you an excuse to sin. But don't forget, you can repent, rely on those mercies, call out to him. He's going to forgive you. Give us a call. We want to pray with you. We want to minister to you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Christ the Healer with Don Allen. For more information about Christ the Healer in this ministry, go to www.twoguysandabible.com. You'll find a variety of information and products that are helpful in confirming that God is willing to heal and He's still doing it today. We want to take this opportunity to offer you a free audio collection of 101 healing scriptures on CD. You can also follow us on our Facebook page for Two Guys in a Bible. Connect with us and view daily posts on healing. Another way to receive teaching on healing is through our radio station. Get online and go to TuneIn.com. Once there, type in 1412 Radio and you'll be able to listen to some great non-mainstream music and our top-rated program Undevourable. If you need to contact us for prayer or you'd like to schedule Don to come and speak in your area, you can call or send an email message and someone will contact you. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on Christ the Healer.